you know, this is actually, uh, you know, a huge topic because of the relationship between uh, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and genetic susceptibility. Uh, and I think that that is, um, uh, the way I'd like to twist the question, basically, is that there are um, a significant number of people who don't seem to have a known breast cancer susceptibility in terms of BRCA1, BRCA2, who have breast and ovarian cancer. Whether it's an increased incidence or not is something we have to address. Ken, are you here? Is Ken Offit here today? Or I think he's. I think he's. Didn't see him last night, so I think he's. He's not in the, in this regard. He was he Ken? Because I. This is actually a, a topic that we are actually considering studying is non BRCA1 and non BRCA1 BRCA2 associated uh, ovarian cancer with breast cancer. Uh, I'm going to then give it to uh, Mary Claire King to make a comment on this. We need a mic up here, please. Thanks, Larry. Um, both here in New York and in Israel with the Frat Rebbe Lahad, we've been addressing this question specifically. That is the connection between breast cancer and ovarian cancer amongst women who carry mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2. Why do some women get breast cancer only? Why do some get ovarian cancer only? And some get both. And the question that Larry alluded to, that is women who don't have any heretofore detectable mutations in either of those genes. Uh, but to, to recap the theme we've already heard, I think there's multiple different answers to the question. Uh, one interesting phenomenon that Afrat has found in Israel is that with the same BRCA1 mutation, the same BRCA2 mutation, all among the Ashkenazi Jewish population, one has a differential risk of ovarian versus breast cancer there compared to breast versus ovarian cancer here. Why? We don't know. Could it be the pill? We don't know. It's an interesting question. It's not genetics. It's something in, in differences in lifestyle between the two countries. The total risk of both cancers put together is the same, but they play out differently in the two, in the two locales. So that's one question. The second question is the, the issue of a woman who uh, tests completely normal for BRCA1 and BRCA2 and yet develops both breast and ovarian cancer. Our experience thus far is that there are many different players, each a very bad player, but each with only a few bad mutations in the gene. We think that there are many different genes involved, and each, essentially each of these criminals gets, gets one shot at one or two families. A very difficult situation to parse out, and the sort of situation for which these uh, current genomic tools are particularly good at identifying the players. So the, the investigation of these especially high risk, what we call mystery patients, um, is very active, and this community is a particularly, um, a, a particularly rich uh, place in which to look for these players because of the unique historical demography of the community. Excellent, thank you. I just want, want to, to mention as a, uh, again, as a plug for BCRF and a, an area of pride is that, you know, we, um, have grants now, uh, Mary Claire has been leading in international collaborations, several international collaborations to look at these particular questions. We also, Fergus Couch from Mayo Clinic, who's here, I think somewhere, uh, is also going to uh, do an international collaboration, BRCA1 story, Ken Offit uh, in BRCA2 story, and we're trying to get together essentially all of the great world leaders uh, in uh, the area of genetic susceptibility uh, to uh, work in, in, in a coordinated fashion on addressing questions such as this and their important implications. Every one of us believes that what we learn about cancer arising in somebody who's genetically susceptible is going to be very, very useful for understanding cancer that arises in people who don't have a known susceptibility, or maybe it's all some susceptibility or other that we don't know about yet. In other words, that, that all of this may be predictable if we understood our genes better. And so we are, are driving toward that, uh, that state of, uh, of total understanding of the process to be able to you know, help everybody at risk, with, uh, at risk for breast cancer, uh, which is uh, all women and men also, uh, particularly those who have uh, genetic uh, changes that may predispose them in this situation.